on to a bit of a more interesting competitive team, I guess you could say, the Miami Dolphins. So again, we'll start with some cap or no cap. Uh, of all projected starting quarterbacks this year, Tua is the quarterback with the largest range of outcomes, meaning could, meaning he could be essentially the worst quarterback in the league or possibly top five. Cap or no cap? No cap, dude. Yeah, I guess no, no cap. cap. You're giving us like all this window of space to work with. I'm just, I, like, is there another quarterback that you think could be even like a bigger range of outcomes? Yeah, like, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to finish as low. He runs more. Yeah, but the Dolphins have such such a good team. They could have such a good team. I think the, the quarterback is the hole, like the hole in their offense. I think that he could finish top five if he utilizes the people that he has around him. Um, but if we see more of what we saw last season, then, yeah, he'll definitely be a bottom feeder. Yeah, but I, I think, think he's just got a, a wide range of outcomes because, like, he has the potential to be a top five quarterback, I think. And they gave him so many more weapons. So, so many weapons, dude. Yeah, he's got a lot around he's him He's just got to make the most of it. So we shall see. But, um, and what's he yeah, missing, Fuller, no for only one game? Um, yeah, Fuller has one game suspension. We'll get into that in a minute here. I know they added Will Fuller, but that's not even the best player they added. Ooh. Ooh. Mac Collins. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I thought, he was, I thought he had something serious to pull <laughs> right. out of his pocket. I thought he was about to gas up Jalen Waddle. I was Waddle. like trying to think of it. Like <laughs> Dolphins. That's funny. <laughs> Alan right. Hearns. No way he's still there. He is. He is. And he's on the practice squad. Yeah, probably. Or going to get cut. Bam. Alan Hearns. I just don't think he makes that roster with how many wide receivers they got now. Um, anyways, let's move on to the next one. Cap or no cap, Miles Gaskin proved he can be the clear-cut starter for the Dolphins and should be drafted as such. No, no cap. cap. No cap. He, no cap, he did, but he, Salvin Ahmed kind of scares me. Yo, Salvin say his Ahmed. name correctly. Yo, Salvin, Savan, Savan Ahmed. There we go. Savan Ahmed. Sorry. I had to look up how to pronounce <laughs> it to make sure I didn't mess it up again like last year. Um, well, I apologize. I'm with he, you, Matt. I'm going to say cap as well. I do think Gaskin had a pretty solid season, but – um, I am just a little bit nervous about the depth there. I don't know. He he was out for an injury or COVID. It was one of them. May have been injury. Um, and that's what Ahmed came in. Uh, Gaskin did have no games uh, with 100 yards rushing, but he does have the pass catch ability. He's had like four or five. He has had plenty of games where he had at least four or five uh, receptions in a game. So that like kind of makes up for it if he can't get the 100 yards. Um, I think he, he would have finished higher if he would have played the whole season. Yeah, I, he played 11 games and still finished RB26. Yeah. He'll be the He's good. Next Jay Ajayi. I believe in him. You guys can sleep. I like Gaskin. We shall see. Let's talk about Gaskin a little bit more in a bit. Um, but last one here for cap or no cap, <clears throat> even with the addition of Will Fuller, Devontae, even with the addition of Will Fuller, Devontae Parker should still be considered the best fantasy wide, wide receiver on this team. Bad Cap question. No Bad question. I don't think he should be. I I mean, Will Fuller proved last year, although he did have Deshaun Watson instead of Tua, that he could be an elite wide receiver. In the, not even just good. He was elite. I but think was he, he had, on drugs? What was it, like eight touchdowns in five weeks or something? I don't know. It was something crazy. But he was just going wild for a little bit there. And then, like you said, he got caught up with the – performance enhancing drugs and stuff and that kind of derailed him a bit but i like him coming back this year is that why he was so good though no he was just that good i just think that fuller is like fuller is definitely the better receiver but parker is going to be the the volume guy i think that i wish i had written down the stat but like there was something where when Tua played like most of his targets were going to Devontae parker i mean force feeding him yeah, I don't think they were really getting to him, though. But They also really didn't have anyone else <laughs> at that time. I think their second wide receiver was like Jakeem Grant. <laughs> Preston Williams. Yeah, he was hurt for a lot while, though, last year, too. So, um, But, yeah, I, 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 I'm a little bit nervous. I would say no cap. I still think Will Fuller's probably got the most potential to be the best wide receiver on this team. Um, but, I mean, I want to say cap because so I'm yeah, saying cap. Will Fuller. I was about to say. But – uh. I do like Devontae Parker, though, too. So I'm a little bit torn. So moving on to the next question here, kind of ties right in. 
which of these wide receivers is the better value? Fuller at wide receiver 35 or Parker at wide receiver 48? Fuller's going to be a steal. He's going to be a steal. Yeah, Fuller is? I got to agree. I think I'm taking Parker. Not that he's going to be a steal, but at the value, it is close. But I'd still like Fuller a lot more on that offense his, his than I ceiling. Did Monte Parker. His ceiling yeah. is way his potential higher. Than is I think he could finish top 20. Yeah. One yeah. game absence won't, won't I mean, make he was it. like top 10 last year until everything yep. happened. So D Park only has one season with more than 63 catches. Was that the season before last? Um, yeah. I think, so. yeah. I think that's yeah. why we came in so hyped this year. Well, last year. The a D lot Park. of people had him pretty high. It's like I'm a big fan of him, though, so I'm not going to hate on him too much. No, I'm not um, hating on him. Definitely not. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I like both. I think both are pretty good options. Um, they also have Jalen Waddle. Are you planning on drafting him? His current ADP is ahead of Devontae Parker at wide receiver 45. That's wild. No shot. I think he's the – out of the four, like, top name uh, rookie wide receivers, I think he's the uh, fourth one, fourth best. Devontae Smith, I, I rank him in drafting them this order, Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, because of all the people that are around Jamar Chase as well. Uh, Elijah Moore, and then Waddle. Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely hear where you're coming from. I kind of like Jalen Waddle. I'm just torn of if he's he's got the potential to kind of be like that Tyreek in this offense, um, but he's also could end up just being the gadget guy like a Tavon Austin. So yeah, that'd be. I kind of want to see how they use him before going all in. But for Dynasty, for sure, he's the most interesting one here out of the, out of the bunch. Drafting him can't hurt you if you draft him with really no expectations because he's honestly a dart throw, but that risk could definitely pay off for you. Yeah, no doubt. Um, we did have a question from Twitter, uh, at geek underscore mill. Our, our, our guy Jeff has been showing, showing us some love on Twitter. He asked who the volume hog is going to be in Miami um, my, between Parker, Waddle, Gaskin, Gasecki, as well as Fuller. Yeah, we kind of hit on it. Which definitely one definitely going to be the, Park. the major volume target. He was getting force fed last year. So, I mean, I don't really see much changing with to his second year and Will Fuller's first year being on the team and the rookie Waddle. I think he's just going to still try and stick with uh, Devontae Parker for the most part. And maybe Kaseki. Yeah, I think it's flashes. I think it's between Parker and Fuller. We saw Fuller get force fed by Watson. So that could easily translate over here. It kind of depends on how they want to run their offense. And I think they're more of a defensive minded team and then kind of want to control the game in that way um but i would probably lean parker as well with you guys i think he's going to get a little bit more target share um and that's why i kind of like his value but will fuller obviously has the most upside yep all right uh shifting the focus back to tua was last year's inconsistency in this offense just rookie nerves or are you nervous about tua heading into this year i actually read something that was Devontae parker where there was like reports of him a two would like change his mechanics. So it maybe just was bad last year. I, I'll give him the benefit of doubt saying that it was like rookie woes, but uh, I think it won't take too far into the season to really see if he's cut out for this. Yeah. And they added a lot of weapons. I mean, I'll give him another shot. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't draft him, but yeah, as a quarterback leading an NFL team, I'll give him another shot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Give him another shot. Definitely nervous, but roll him back out there. See what he's got this year with more weapons around him. I would say if Ryan Fitzpatrick was on this team with who they've added, I'd be very high on Ryan Fitzpatrick and all these players. I think I'd be extremely high on because he, <laughs> he fed as maybe he threw a million interceptions, five a, interceptions game. a game. Yeah. <laughs> five. We'll give him five. Uh, he did hit, hit his targets and score a lot of points at, at some, some points with that, within the last season or in his whole 20,000 year career. I think he's on team 32 now. He might be. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get into the last question for the Dolphins. They added Malcolm Brown and still have Savan Ahmed rostered. Are you worried about Miles Gaskin losing touches? Losing touches, yes. Yeah. but I think he starts the season as a starter, but yeah, I'm definitely scared of him losing a little bit of that volume that he had last year when he was healthy. I mean, we saw Ahmed do well when Gaskin was out. And Malcolm Brown had a couple of good games last year, but they're both going to be, I think Brown's going to be the bigger vulture because he was like the goal line guy. Um, but he is listed as the fourth running back on the depth chart. So I don't know who's ahead of him. 
So they might they need to be worried have, about whoever um, number three is. Jared Dokes. They got a rookie. Uh, I don't know. Who that is. <laughs> don't worry about Jared Dokes. <laughs> he might not <laughs> even make the team. Rookie. He might be all right. But, yeah, he definitely has to earn his roster spot before. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely all have an impact. I think I'd rank them Ahmed, then Malcolm Brown in order of worries. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would agree with that. Um. All right, let's get into our bold takes and favorite targets. Q, start us off. What do you got? Uh, I don't know his first name, but uh, his last name. He he's like Fabio Van Ginkle on the, uh, <laughs> the Dolphins special team defense. He's gonna lead the Dolphins defense to be top five, uh, in fantasy. Last year they finished eight. Some other website they finished fourth. I I don't know what they were going off of, but they were a top eight defense and they were barely owned. Uh, they brought back many of their key pieces and then drafted a lot of young guys. So I think that'll help them maybe stay within the top five or top eight, but top five for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think they have the potential to be there. Um, just keep an eye on Xavier and Howard. Uh, I think within the last few hours here, um, well, I guess yesterday for everyone watching, uh, but Xavier and Howard is the trade talks are heating up. Uh, he's unhappy with his contract situation. So. He might be on the way out. Bring bring him to Philly. But if he stays, for sure, even without him, they're still a really solid unit. And they have uh, they have brought back Jakeem Grant on the special teams. He's a pretty quick dude. You love Jakeem Grant. No, Sean brought him up the first time. Yeah, I did. All right. Anyways, we guys, love him. Give us what you got. I'm sure everybody knows what's coming. Um, Will Fuller. He's he's the receiver you want to own in this offense. Um. I mean, he probably will miss some games, so make sure you get like a, a decent backup. <laughs> but, but it only takes like one play for him to go from like a four-point game to like a twenty-point game. Like his his chance of like breaking out for a big play is like insane. He might have like the highest ever. Like, bro, he's so good. I don't care what anybody says. He played he played three less games last year than D Park and still finished nine spots above him. I know he had a different quarterback, but it's just showing his potential. Yeah, no doubt. His like ceiling it. is definitely the highest out of probably anyone in this offense. I would agree. All right, Matt, what do you got for us here? All right, man. I'm going to go to the quarterback position. And before I even start, I dare someone to say Tua Tagovailoa's full first name. Uh, let me look it up. I'll, I'll give you a quick second to look it up. But while you're looking it up, I'm going to just say – I think he finishes in the top 15, like we touched on a little bit previously. He, uh, they added all these new weapons for him. They got the rookie Jalen Waddle. They brought in Will Fuller, T God's guy. So I think that helps him tremendously. I think Gaskin being back helps him a lot. I know that their offensive line is probably the worst in the league, but I mean, if they get a little bit of that run game going and they give two of the opportunity to just throw the ball downfield, he's going to excel. So I honestly like to a lot. His legs help him a lot get out of trouble. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw him creep up into that top 15 by the end of the year. Yeah, we always preach that running back or quarterbacks that can run the ball are very uh, valuable. So he didn't do that much a few games he played last year. But if he can step that up, he, I can see top 15. He can use him if he needs to. All right. I'll finish off the Dolphins here. Um, First one, I mean, not first one. I'm just going to say Miles Gaskin finishes outside the top 25 running backs. I think I have him ranked at 25, um, but he's going to be playing behind arguably the worst offensive line in football um, with a young, inexperienced quarterback who we saw struggle last year, um, and they added a bunch of weapons for him to try and air it out. Uh, he also had fewer receptions last year when Tua played quarterback compared to when Ryan Fitzpatrick was playing. He caught a few more passes out of the backfield. Um so I'm just a bit nervous about locking him in as my RB2. I don't want to say I hate Miles Gaskin because I do like his talent and I do think he's the most talented back in this backfield. Uh, but they still have Ahmed. They did sign Malcolm Brown. They have Jared Dokes, as I already mentioned. So they have Please guys that are going to be – he's an undrafted rookie. You've seen undrafted rookies come out of nowhere. Would you bet the year. over over one that we'd speak about him again this season? Yeah. That there'll there'll be a again. reason to speak about him. This Not just bring him up so you could – Take the so I can mention Jared Dokes. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to want to go out of my way to mention him. But, yeah, I just think I don't want to get too high and, like, secure him as my – like, this is my RB2. 
I think he's like right on the cusp of like being in that RB2 territory.